Today's stone generator produces 28,000 stone per hour, faster than insta mining speed, and it may be the fastest stone generator in Bedrock Edition. It's easy to build, it'll get you a ton of stone and cobblestone, and you can even hook it up to a super smelter to get smooth stone from it. You will also want to use it for your moss farm or skulk farm if you make one. Let's dive in. And before we get started, let's go over the materials that you're going to need. This many of, I recommend deep slate based solid block. Deep slate's gonna be better because it's gonna be harder for you to accidentally break with your pickaxe. You're gonna need this much redstone, a redstone block, a couple comparators, uh, three torches, 11 repeaters, an observer, 27 hoppers, 45 pistons, 50 pieces of obsidian, 30 chests, three sand, a trap door, a lever, 20 buckets of lava, and 20 buckets of water. All right, so it's my goal today to make this as easy for you guys to make in survival Minecraft as possible. So we're actually going to start with the platform where you're going to be standing with your pickaxe to get the stone or cobblestone. So I've just picked an arbitrary spot up in the air, but you're going to start with wherever it is that you're going to be standing to get these materials. And let's just say I have a little platform here to stand on. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to get some hoppers facing straight down. So I'm going to place a few temporary blocks right here, just like this. And we're going to have five hoppers facing down like this. And then I want a set of hoppers facing forward. And this will make sure that we don't have items filter into the top chests by accident. And then below this point right here is where we're going to put our chests. Um, you can do your storage however you want to. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. We're just gonna have five rows of three chests, just like this. We're gonna have poppers facing into each one of these. And that's super simple. The only thing you're ever gonna have in here is stone or cobblestone, depending on if you're using a silk touch pickaxe or a regular pickaxe. So no need for sorters and that sort of thing. We'll just kind of keep it simple, have everything go in just like this. Actually our platform here, I, I want it to sit one down further because we're gonna actually be standing this hopper level right here. Um, we do want to keep items from possibly popping out. So we're going to surround these hoppers down here. And we are also going to surround up here where our stone is eventually going to go into. And we'll do the same thing with the backside too, just to kind of button everything up and make sure that we don't have any items escape or get out. Lastly, I'm going to put a trap door right here. It's just going to help separate me from the items coming to me a little bit more than maybe they would otherwise. Uh, not really necessary, but we'll go ahead and put the trap door there. And this is your kind of base station where you're going to be almost all complete. But next, we need to figure out where our stone is going to come from. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our pistons that are going to be pushing our stone into this area. So over from this hopper, you're going to count one two, three, put a piece of obsidian and do five pieces just like this. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and then a temporary block back here. And then you're gonna do five pistons. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna put obsidian back behind those as well. The reason why we're using so much obsidian is obsidian cannot be pushed by a piston. So we're gonna have stone traveling down this way and it will not be able to travel further down at this point, which is what we want. Also, if these pistons were to push when this lineup is full or the pistons over there were to push this way, it would actually push these pistons if we did not have the obsidian behind it. The obsidian is keeping this farm from breaking. Make sure you are using obsidian or uh, crying obsidian would be okay as well. Blocks that cannot be moved by uh, piston is what we're looking for. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. The one, two, three. Obsidian, temporary block, piston, one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Super easy. This bottom section is the guts of it anyways are pretty much done. So now we're gonna make where the actual stone generators are gonna go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to one of these sides. We're gonna go up one, two, three, four blocks, go over one block, and then facing in this direction is where our piston's gonna go. So I'm just gonna place down couple more blocks right there just like that i'm gonna pop this one out and i'm gonna place a piston facing there now just pointing this way i'm actually going to do the same thing on the other side too so i'm going to go over one two three and then place a piston facing that way we can get rid of this we can get rid of this we can get rid of all of this all of that was just temporary stuff so we can get our pistons placed and just like we've done down there we're going to place five pistons one two three four and five one two three four and five we're going to put obsidian behind these. That way they do not break. And we're going to end up needing to add water and lava to this area. So we want to make sure we trap all of our water in. So we're going to put blocks around all of this, just like this. 
And we can put blocks right here as well. Here, 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 here. And then we can, I guess, set up for our lava to go above all of this. So let's go ahead and let's put blocks across here and get rid of those end ones right here like that. And then something separating right in the middle, just like this. So you'll have a little chamber like this where you're able to place lava right above these pistons. So we can put water in the pistons to waterlog them. And then we can put lava right above them. Technically, you can just do one source of lava, but I always worry that it's not going to spread quite as good or it's going to create issue with making cobblestone or something's going to change with the mechanics of the game. So I always just fill them all with lava. Um, I feel like that's a safer bet. And if you want to protect yourself from falling into the lava, you can put something over top of it would be fine. But now, as you can see, we've generated stone and stone's going to generate every time stone is moved or broken. Now we need to do the same thing over here. And there we go. Now we have two chambers all set up, ready to generate stone. And it's actually time to start setting up all of our redstone. If you're enjoying today's video, help it get discovered by more people by clicking the like button and leaving a comment. Also, if you enjoy my videos, click the subscribe button, join my Discord channel, and become a channel member by clicking the join button. Members get awesome perks, including access to my members only Minecraft servers. Now, back to the video. Okay, now next we need to make our clock. We're gonna use an Etho Hopper clock, which is a popular clock design in Minecraft. It's gonna make sure our redstone all goes off at a perfect timing. So we're at the front of the build right now. We're gonna go to the back. I'm going to temporarily connect this over and we're gonna go out four blocks this way. So one, two, three, four. And on this fifth block right here, we need a couple hoppers facing each other. I'm just gonna click there to place a hopper. We're going to place a hopper facing into that. Oops, we're going to accidentally delete that hopper. And then we'll face a hopper into that. And we can get rid of those temporary blocks. These ones on the corner we're going to need later, so we're just going to keep those. So this is just a standard hopper clock. If you were to put an item in here, the item would just go back and forth between the two. But we want to be able to put multiple items in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a, a few blocks down here to work with, just like this. Uh, we're going to have a comparator to read out of each one of these hoppers, the items that are in them. Now we're going to place a solid block here, a solid block here. We can get rid of these two. We're going to put a piece of redstone dust on here, on here, and then a piston facing this way, a piston facing this way, and a block of redstone in the middle. And this is going to make our clock. Basically what's happening is these uh, comparators are able to read the items that are in, and whenever one of them goes all the way down to zero, it will unlock one side and push the redstone block over. So as you can see, what I can do is I can put three in here, which is going to be the amount that we want, and it creates a clock. We don't need these items in here right now, so we're just going to go ahead and take them out and this thing can sit. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to hook this clock up to run both sides. And we're going to have it so when the redstone block is on one side, it is operating one side of each one of these stone generators. And when the redstone blocks in the other position, it will operate the other side. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So we're going to come out this side that's already kind of lined up with the middle here just to make everything look nice and neat. We're going to put a solid block right here. Uh, we're going to put a piston facing up right here with a piece of sand on top of it. We're going to put a solid block right here and right here. And what we can do is we can put a piece of redstone dust right here, a redstone repeater right here, and we can run redstone across this and redstone across this. Now, what this is going to do, if I were to turn this back on, as you can see, it lets that redstone signal come through here and just give it a tick. It just it just ever so slightly pulses it and lets it move the blocks. And as you can see, it's actually generating stone for us right here. We need to now do the same thing on the other side. So what I can do is I can place a deep slate block right here. I can come out this way and I'm just going to end up running it right over to here. Same thing on this side, run it right over to here. And then in this third block slot right here, we're going to do that same little piston thing, right? Piston, sand, repeater out. On the other side, piston, sand, repeater out. And if I run redstone across to this, redstone across to this, as you can see, it's working. It's doing what we want it to do. And we'll just run redstone all the way across here. 
Now, since the redstone is on top of the subsidian, which is beside these pistons right here, it's making those pistons get powered. So it is pushing the stone over. You can kind of see as I break it, each side is now pushing stone into the middle. And I've realized that we have an issue. These are supposed to be pistons and they're not, but it's an easy fix. We can just literally come down right below the farm. We can knock out all of that stone that's been generated right here. And then we could quickly break in place, break in place, break in place, break in place, and break in place. And now we have pistons facing down. I'm just going to do the same thing over here. Now we have pistons facing down, just like we did before. We're going to put obsidian on top of those. That way they don't get pushed away when they're trying to push and do things. It's going to make it break proof, basically. And now every time that this right here goes off and pushes these pistons, we then want this to push that new stone down. Also, every time this generates stone and pushes over, we want these pistons to push the stone down. So this is going to be easy to do. We're going to put a block right here just to fill that little gap that we had placed. We're going to place a repeater right here on two ticks. So put the repeater, click it once, place the repeater, click it once. And then now if I put redstone here and here, what you'll see if I turn this thing on, it's going to take the stone that it generates and it's going to push it down. Whereas this side, of course, is not hooked up, so it's not going to do that. Look at that. Push it down really quick. So you can see every time that this goes off, that goes off. And every time this goes off, that side goes off. We're just going to do the same thing for the other side. And as you can see, it is now filled in. And the last stage of this is now we need to take this and we need to move it in this way. Take this and move it in this way. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take this redstone signal here and we're going to bring it down. So I'm going to put a block right here and a block right here. And we're going to place a repeater facing into this block. That's going to give this block power and then we're going to take a redstone signal down from there. So we're just going to kind of stair step it down just like this. So that signal is just going to come down, down, down and then across these pistons right here. Now what will happen is every time that this pushes the stone down, this will push the stone over. And just like we did here, we want to add in a little bit of delay. That way we know for sure we're going to be pushing stone and we're not going to have the pistons out when stone comes down. It's important to make sure that you do these timings like I've shown. Now we can't just do that on this side because then these pistons will push at the same time and that's going to cause problems. We need these pistons to push at a different time as these pistons. So instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to take our signal from there and we're going to bring it across and bring it over here and I'm going to take this signal coming out right here I'm going to bring it to the end here I'm going to make an observer 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 look at this signal and then every time that this signal is seen it's going to send a new signal out I'm going to bring this uh, redstone dust out a little ways just to make sure I can make it all the way down there um, and then we're going to run it through two repeaters that are at a one single tick. I'm doing this instead of doing this because this actually makes the pistons stay out longer. I don't want that. I want the pistons to go back in really quick. So if we just run the redstone dust over here, what we should end up seeing if I turn this thing on, we should see some magic happen and we should see this push, then this push, then this push, then this push. But before we do that, we need a good way to turn this thing on and off. I think we're going to do that over here. We're going to add in a block right there and a block under here just to dress it up. We can even do this, right? Just to make everything look nice and easy and give ourselves a little bit of a platform to stand on. We're going to put a lever right here. We want that lever to send a signal all the way down to right underneath this block right here, right? And what we're going to do is we are going to put a block right here. We'll make a little torch tower. So we're going to do redstone torch and block and redstone torch. Run redstone across this. This is basically our on off switch. So if I flick this lever, this redstone is now on, which means this torch is on. I can get rid of this. This thing is locked. It's not working because we have this redstone turned on. It's not letting this piston move back in. But if I flick this lever, what we should see happen is this whole system come together and work. Look at it. That is absolutely perfect. You could not ask for better results than that. We can just go ahead and top that off to dress it up and make it look nice. And you can see if we take just a regular netherite pickaxe and we mine this thing, we can barely make it to the second block. Most of the time we don't even break it. So this this does us no good. Now, if we have a pickaxe with efficiency five on it. 
We, we sometimes get to the second block. Still not fast enough, though. But if we set up a beacon, we can get the haste two effect. That's going to give us insta mining capabilities. So now if I stand here, as you can see, we can rip through this thing and we make it to that back block just in time. Every single time we are basically insta mining at full speed from one location. This thing is incredibly fast. You can sit here for 10 minutes and get yourself about a chest and a half worth of stone if you're using silk touch or cobblestone if you're not using silk touch on your pickaxe and you have these enchants and the haste to effect and you can see in just a very short period of time like we stood there for like 20 30 seconds and we already have a few stacks of stone like this thing is absolutely awesome it is fast and just as an fyi you do not need to chunk align this this will work perfectly fine whether it's inside of a chunk or it's crossing chunk borders i designed this so the location of it does not matter i wanted to make it as easy as possible if you want a copy of today's tutorial a world download link is in the description below don't forget to show the like button some love leave a comment down below to make the youtube algorithm happy with me and subscribe to the channel thanks and i'll see you next time